we've been dealing back and forth, thank you, God, with um, Moses, right? And we have Moses and, and Jesus had like some strong parallels, right? Okay. Now, with Moses and Jesus having strong parallels the way that they did, One of the biggest parallels was Pharaoh said to kill what? All the, all the boys. King Herod said to kill what? All the boys. So Pharaoh's problem was, I don't want them to continue to reproduce. Right? Because the man, he can, he can continue to reproduce as many times as he wants to within a time period. So that's why a lot of those children were born and, you know, people like King David and all of them had 15, 20, 30 different kids because they could reproduce all over the place. So Pharaoh was like, kill all the boys. That was his motive, right? When it came to King Herod, he said, uh, kill all the boys because the only thing he heard was about a king. And he's thinking materialistically. He's thinking territorially. He's not thinking spiritually. But watch this. That was their motive and their reason. But that wasn't Satan's motive or reason. See, a lot of times we act stuff out for one reason. Not knowing the motive or the reason why Satan even enticed us to do it anyway. And we get the emotion attached to it when in actuality he just wants something done. Remember we said before our intentions has nothing to do with Satan's motives. You can intend to do a certain thing but his motive may be something totally and completely different. Watch this now. Book of Revelations chapter number 12. <clears throat> And I'm going to read this to you. Okay? Matter of fact, go to Genesis 1. Genesis 1. It says what? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, right? Then the next sentence says what? Stop. Which version is this? Go to the King James. My bad. What does yours say? Uh-uh. Back up. Who has a King James? What does it say? NIV. Who has it? What does it say? That, what's that word? Now. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And even the original version say, now, the earth. So if there's a now, there's a then. So something happened between in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth is what? Formless, void. What else? And darkness covered the face of what? The deep. Formless, void, darkness are not characteristics of God. Somebody say rewind. Formless, empty, and dark are characteristics of who? Who? Hmm. Revelations chapter 12. 
Because get this in your spirit, before you see it, it had to be done already. Everything we see in the natural realm, the transaction has already taken place spiritually. Am I making sense? Y'all better get this. This is going to get us to slow down. Now watch this. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, it says, then this is John. Now, now, John, I believe what God showed me today, he's out on the Isle of Patmos and he's having these visions. This is the same John that walked with Jesus. This is some 85 years or so after Jesus had passed. Somewhere between 60, between 40 and 80 years after Jesus had went on to glory. John is having this vision out on the Isle of Patmos and Jesus is explaining to him from a spiritual aspect what happened in heaven. Same way Moses was explained everything what happened in the book of Genesis. Right? Everybody said, how did Moses know that? This is the reason why the children of Israel were acting a fool because Moses was up in the mountain with God for all of those days. And God was explaining to Moses what happened in the beginning so Moses could write it. So Genesis, Exodus, all those first five books of the Bible, Moses wrote. And this happened hundreds, if not thousands of years before Moses ever came on the scene. Yeah. (laughs) You're getting something now. Revelation chapter 12, it says, this is John saying, Then I witnessed in heaven an event, I'm in the NLT now, an event of great significance. Watch what he says. I saw a woman clothed with the sun. With the moon beneath her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head, she was what? Pregnant and cried out because of her labor pains and the agony of giving birth. Hmm. Sounds sounds familiar, doesn't it? Okay, then it says, then I witnessed in heaven another significant event. I saw a large red dragon with seven heads and ten horns with seven crowns on his head. Watch, his tail swept away one third of the stars in the sky and he threw them down to the what? Earth. He stood in front of the woman as she was about to give birth, ready to devour her baby as soon as it was born. She gave birth to what? A son who was to rule what? All nations with an iron rod. And her child was snatched away from the dragon and was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, a desolate place, a dry place, a place where nobody is. So sometimes when you're lonely and you feel like you ain't supposed to be there, that's the safest place in the world to be. Because those are the times when you can get one-on-one time with God. Those are the times when God is accountable to feed you. Oh, my God. Then what? There it is. Woman fled into the wilderness where God had prepared a place to care for her. See, he's already made preparations for you to be taken care of, even in your dry season. Then it says to take care of her for 1,260 days. I said, boy, Lord, 1,260 days. This is me and God today. I said, well, that's that's equivalent to like three years. Oh, but then he showed me. He said, no. He said, in the Bible, when I talk about a day, I'm talking about a lifetime. He said, that's why I say in the day of Moses. Moses lived over 500 years, so his whole life was considered a day to God. So we don't really know exactly how many years this actually is. This could mean 1,260 lifetimes. And what if every lifetime lasted 500 years each? Stop trying to figure God out down to a science. Verse number seven says, then there was war, where? In heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, 
and his angels. And the dragon lost the battle, and he and his angels were forced out of heaven. This great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to earth with all of his angels. Then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens, it has come at last, salvation and power, the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters have been thrown down to earth, the one who accuses them before God day and night. And they, and they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb. And he's saying he's already defeated by the blood. So how were you living a defeated lifestyle if the word says that he's already been dealt with? We live defeated lifestyles because we're going after things that God never promised us. And they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. See, for those that keep trying to run away from a struggle, you're also running away from your testimony. Now, that don't mean just go jump in a struggle. If you got a good thing going on, keep making good decisions. So, therefore, you can be strong enough to handle the struggle that's coming your way in a way. Because if you're walking with Christ, if you grow and you're going to go through a storm, that's the only way you're going to keep growing is when the rain fall on you. Well, now watch this. Verse 11, he says, and they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. They didn't love being here and want everything here so much to where the thought of death scared them. In fact, they looked forward to death because death would put them with Christ. But I guarantee you, most people in here are afraid to die because of everything they want to accomplish in this life. I'm in the book. Now watch this. He says, and they were not afraid to die. So if I'm afraid to die, to die, then that means I'm not in the they that he talking about. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Well, therefore rejoice, O heaven. And you who live in the heavens rejoice. But terror will come on the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you in great anger. Knowing that he has a little time. When the, now watch this verse 13. When the dragon realized... He didn't even know where he was. God got him out quick, fast, and in a hurry. <laughs> Can y'all go scuba diving real quick? Y'all ready? Book of Ezekiel talks about how Satan was adorned with every diamond, ruby, Lapis lazuli, all of these different, that's a, real, that's a real stone. It's a beautiful blue stone. He had all of this, this stuff on him that, watch this now, these things were created on the day that he was created. So all of these jewels and diamonds and, and all of these rubies, all of these things were created on the day that Satan himself was created and they were placed on him. This was his robe. He was cold-blooded. He was beautiful. He was the, 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 the most beautiful thing from head to toe. All of this good singing and this good music you hear, he had it all right here. 
He was so cold, he could stand at the mountain of God and lead worship and lead people into the presence of God at the foot of the mountain of God. That's how cold he was with his gift. But then people, other angels start saying, Lucifer, man, you sung good. Instead of him saying, oh, glory to God, he said, thank you. So instead of him giving glory to God, he start liking the compliments for himself. This feel pretty good to be uplifted like this. I did slay him in the spirit today. I am a beast. We killed him today. Yeah, you did kill him. All this emotional stuff. Yeah, you killing every Sunday. Somebody dying every Sunday because they done, they done had a praise break every five minutes. Do you know that the devil will give you a praise break every Sunday to keep the preacher from preaching? Every praise break ain't of God. And notice when we just have a good time talking about the Lord, you don't see, man, we had a time at church today. You don't see it. But the only time you had a time at church is when, 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 when we don't went crazy with the music. Oh, but not here, not here at this church, you know. So the spirit move on you to shout, go on to shout. I want you to, he said, I bet not shout because pastor going to say something. <laughs> but, but see, watch this. He's adorned with every ruby, diamond, lapis. We, I need to find that scripture. I know it's in Ezekiel. Is it Ezekiel 12? I know I have it written down. That's why I told you to bring your Bibles tonight. It's either Ezekiel. Ah, uh, okay. I'm not laying right on Ezekiel 12. It's not. Ezekiel 12. I got times. Ezekiel 28. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ezekiel 28, 13. Just find that. Now, now watch this. We're in, we're in Revelations, right? We're in Revelations, and it says that uh, he was cast down where? To earth. And then he did what? Realized. He realized, ain't that what it said? He realized where he was. He realized that he had been thrown down to earth. Watch. He pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. Uh Uh-oh. This is why he wants you to keep saying, I don't need no man. This is why he wants you to continue to try to take the place of a man. Man, this is why he don't want you in position where you're supposed to be as a man. He pursued the male woman who gave gave birth to the male child, right? Is this what the Bible says? But she was given two wings. She got an escape route. Like those of a great eagle, so she could. Woo-hoo. Could. In other words, it was optional for her to fly away. I'm going to give you the equipment that you need to get out of that situation. Now you have to make up your mind if you're going to do it or not. So y'all better stop blowing past these words. So that she could fly away to the place. Prepared for her, where? In the wilderness. There she was cared for and protected from the dragon for a time and times and a half a time. Now, the wilderness is a place, it's dry, it's desolate, it's lonely, 
And there's nothing around there. There's no life in the wilderness, right? But then verse 15 says, Then the dragon tried to drown the woman with the flood of water that flowed from his mouth. Flooded her with words. And what are you all as women good with? Can cut. And some of these men can too. They can, but I guarantee you they was raised. I know choice morsels. I know. I know. But look at what happened. Look at what. Oh, glory. God, I just heard that. I want to run and jump. It says that the dragon tried to drown the woman with the flood of water that flowed from his mouth. Then it says, but the earth helped her by opening his mouth. Notice I said his. Mouth and his, because how, what, what was Adam made from? Y'all not catching me this. Adam was made from the earth. Eve wasn't. So it was his job to stand in between what the enemy was saying and take the punches to keep her healthy. Well, I know y'all don't see all of this. I get too excited. Yes, God. Gushed out from the mouth of the dragon. And the dragon was angry at the woman and declared war against the rest of her children. And some, some Bible says it declared war against her because she carried the man child. You got to understand, start looking at the publishers, thank you God, of every version of the Bible that you get. Because the publishers of the Bibles that you have, have a motive and the reason why certain words were taken out. This is why I, I don't like Bibles for men. I don't like Bibles for women. I don't like Bibles for teenagers. Why? Because they omit certain things catering to your emotions. In order to get you to read it, the motive, your intention might be right. But the enemy's motive is to water down the word to where it don't work because that is not what he said. Contrary to what you want to think or believe, God put you, man of God, as the head of the household. Period. Mm -hmm. Now, 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 now. If you go back, it says there was war in heaven, verse number seven. Michael and his angels were cast down to the earth, and then Satan recognized that he was on earth. He realized that he was on earth. Now, let's look at what happened here in Ezekiel chapter number 28, verse number, right before, it's toward the end of, it's right around 12. It says, Son of man, sing this funeral song. For the king of Tyre, give him this message from the sovereign Lord. You were, past tense, the model of perfection, full of wisdom and exquisite in beauty. Well, look at that next line. You were in Eden. The garden of God. Your, watch this. Your clothing was adorned with every, say every, 
Every precious stone, that's why a diamond can't be your best friend. You were clothed, your clothing was adorned with every precious stone. Some of this stuff I don't even know what it is. Red carnelian, pale green peridot, white moonstone, blue green beryl, onyx, green jasper, blue lapis lazuli, uh, turquoise, and emerald, all beautifully crafted for you and set in the finest gold they were given to you on the day you were created. Now watch this. Satan is cast down. Here goes something big for you. Anytime you're looking for these types of stones, where do you have to go to find them? You got to dig in the dirt to find these stones. So from a scientific standpoint, when they said it was a big bang theory, Jesus said, I saw Satan cast down where? To the earth like a bolt of lightning. So could it be that all of the diamonds and rubies and all this stuff people are finding under the ground was Satan's clothes? So once he hit the ground, So this is what you call revelation. Because we don't see mention of that stuff until we've seen who it was on. And they got under the ground some kind of way. He realized he was on earth. You have, you have, you have a, you have a, if, if I took a glass and just dropped it from right here, it's going to shatter, but it's, it's, it ain't going to go that far. But if I just went as high as, 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 as the building and just dropped it, it's going to scatter everywhere in some pieces you ain't going to ever be able to find. So imagine you in heaven. And God, it didn't say he dropped him. He said he cast him. Cornell, don't you cast a rod and reel? And, and don't you got to come back <laughs> and use some authority? God didn't, lightning ain't just dropped. Lightning flashes so hard, so fast, and so heavy to where you see it, but then you don't hear what happened until a few seconds after the lightning done flashed. Oh, my God. See, God didn't wait for Satan to get undressed. Now you finna get up out of here now. You, you, you. Now you have a better understanding as to why when God told the children of Israel, when you get ready to leave Egypt, go borrow a bunch of their gold and a bunch of their jewelry. <laughs> he telling the devil, yeah, my people got <laughs> your stuff. <laughs> Look at them. They, they wearing all. <laughs> your diamond, your, you used to wear that kind of stuff, but, but, but you just decided to be a little too high of yourself, and I had to strip you. He realized where he was because now he's in this earth realm, invisible and naked with nowhere to go. He realizes he's in this earth realm illegally because in heaven, in the spirit realm, he has all the rights to be there, but down here, God says, let us make man in our image, give him power and authority where? Over the earth to where whatever he binds on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever he loose on earth will be loosed on heaven. The reason why the devil taking control of your life is because you loose him every time you open your mouth. 
You getting on my nerves, he gone. When is it going to get better? He gone. I can't ever get nothing right. He gone. You release it. Giving him the authority because you have the authority.